How's everybody doing today? Doing good, good. Thank you all for coming out here. Uh, so I've got a, a um, PowerPoint presentation here for you that uh, this has been in the works for the last couple years and every now and then I'd, I'd, I'd try to update it and this, this year I'm going to add a little bit more about the early SSP program but I think there, there might be someone, there's someone in this room that's more qualified to speak on the early program, uh, Penny Bradley in the back there, but uh, I'm going to just bring up a few things because I just wanted to connect it into Tartaria. But uh, there's a little info on me right there. Um, so the reason why I'm bringing up the, um, and by the way, for those of you who don't know, I'm James Rink, and um, I'm uh, the founder of Super Soldier Talk, as well as the YouTube channel. And I am a super soldier, and my experience in this, uh, well, I, I've actually participated in some of these projects that we're going to share. but. Um, uh, I, I participated in this too in a past life, but um, didn't really do me much good. At the end of the day, uh, if humanity is not set free, then you're just basically a slave. So it's not just the SSB groups, it's here on planet Earth. We're all kind of in the same predicament. But um, this, is a, this just gives you an idea of the control system that we're dealing with. But uh, if we go back, there is, it's a lot more encompassing. So uh, the reason why I'm pulling up Tartaria is because the original inhabitants that came out of Inner Earth and Thula um, had settled the area due east of the Caspian Sea of a territory known as the Tartar Marlux. But this particular area, we're going to go roughly around the year around 1800 to 1820, a steampunk civilization emerged, or was in the beginning of emerging, although this picture right here uh, probably predates around 1880, but um, the one on the far right there. But um, this breakaway civilization uh, started to promote uh, free energy and anti-gravity, as well as devices that would heat uh, mansions and people's homes without any electricity. So this technology, this civilization was destroyed, uh, at least according to some of the remote viewing, it appears the, uh, the Draco were upset at the rapid advancement of the human race. And um, was, uh, I think they're using time travel tech to look into the future to create a timeline which keeps humanity in, under enslavement or at least under their control. So um, even though the, these mud floods were created to wipe this particular civilization off the map, the inhabitants of this area settled all over the world. And uh, the area of um, the Los Angeles Basin was actually pri was a Lemurian colony, uh, farming community, and the food was uh, sent up north to San Francisco. There was a, a Lemurian colony as well before the settlers from uh, Europe got there. Uh, but uh, some of these settlers settled in the area of Sonora, Sonora and um, set up, of course, the Sonora Aero Club. And uh, that, this, is, uh, this, is pre this is the beginning of the Solar Warden program. And an offshoot of that was the Solomon Andrews um, airship. So there's a little drawing there of what it allegedly looked like. But um, some of these solar warden crafts, the early ones, look more of a cylindrical. So that program was moved to Louisiana. Again, this is around 1862. And then moving forward, we have Samuel Tillman, who was an airship pilot for um, the, well, so, um, he flew a cigar shaped craft. So this is around 1897. And uh, he was also close friends with John Jacob Astor. So the Astor family was the ones that were a po in opposition to the Federal Reserve Bank. So um, J.P. Morgan sent, gave him a free ticket on the, uh, the White Star Line, and that, that was the end of that uh, bloodline. And uh, so I think there was the, these families were using, in my opinion, some kind of chronovisor, a time travel tech, to see who, sh who should they target, who sh how should they ch change the timelines to prevent these te advanced technologies because I think if this guy survived the Titanic, we probably would uh, have a, um, a world like Nikola Tesla wanted for us. 
So I'm going to just mention this short thing about Keeley. So like I said, I'm, I'm not necessarily an expert on this, but uh, here's some of his sympath sympathetic vibrational devices. And he just used certain gyroscoping act, um, actions. And they found that it could create a weightlessness by changing. And you can see the scale here in the middle picture. So um, he was able to move around uh, very heavy equipment. Um, and the media branded him as a quack, and still science books don't recognize him. But I really think there was something to what Keely was up to, and uh, considering the, his backers and the people he's working with. Um, Frank Reed is just a, another publisher who had, uh, these are fantastical drawings and images, uh, fictional stories, accounts, but he, most, he probably did have access to some of these early secret SSP programs, but um, I didn't, there's, yeah, my, my focus is on some more of the SSP aspect in that particular slide. So I'm going to move on here to uh, um, Thomas Townsend Brown. So uh, at least according to some of the, uh, the research, so this project uh, Winter Haven, I'm going to go in just a bit, but Nikola Tesla and the Dyson family were working together with the, um, Tom, Townsend Brown to create electrostatic and gravitational motors. And which the, the images you see on the top were um, in the, the community where uh, Townsend Brown lived. And those were some of the ships. I think that was part of the offshoot of Winter Haven. But uh, Town, um, I mean Brown, he actually uh, filed the first patent for the electrogravitic generator called a gravitator. And uh, that particular device was handed over to the U.S. government and the U.S. Navy to try to build a saucer craft. Um, so it's rumored that he was stealing technology for, from Nes uh, uh, for the Nazis by um, on the Tesla's workshop. So uh, I can't confirm that, but according to SSP insider William Tompkins, uh, he worked. He later worked for the Douglas Aircraft Co Company. So, so the U.S. Navy basically shut down his funding. They didn't really. They claimed they didn't believe him, and then they they just handed it over to Douglas uh, Douglas Aircraft Company, and that also was um, funneled under Solar Warden. So, um, I'm going to go a little bit into uh, Schumann with uh, two ends on supposed to be two ends on the end, but. Uh, Winfred, Winifred Otto Schumann was uh, invo allegedly involved in developing the first real saucers for the Germans in the 1920s and 1930s. And the document over here is from a project paperclip, which basically showed it that he was working at a classified facility in Dayton, Ohio, which was working on some of this anti-gravity technology. So that was another little key, the puzzle there. But uh, so, and he's also known for the Schumann resonance. That's most likely how you probably heard his name. And of course, we're gonna throw in here some uh, Nikola Tesla. I've actually talked a little about the new spell and some of the uh, other videos I've done. So this this information came through channel means. And if you have trouble, I know it's the Texas ball, but um, essentially, uh, one of the last devices that through remote viewing it appears Nikola Tesla was working on this bell-shaped object which could reverse all aging disease and take away all hunger temporarily anyway and um, this particular technology was uh, allows you to dematerialize and rematerialize and uh, so so the uh, nazis wanted to get the release well, the germans from antarctica wanted to get their hands on this technology and eventually did and rebranded re it diglaca and um, i'm going to go into diglaca just a bit so the reason why I'm showing this slide is because we're going to go into more of the German aspects of the SSP because the Germans, um, unlike the Americans who I guess would, when we look at like the scientific skunk works, the Americans have, um, they have let their religion or other mis, um, preconceived notions affect or color the, the, their research. But the Germans basically stated that let's just make everything an open book let's let's create a whole new science and um i'm not just talking about the Anunnaki who is all over the world trying to gather ancient tech but um the whole principle of of this nazi philosophy was to become better than human or uber human and so um so what we're seeing here are the different types of reichs uh representing the the different German groups. So not all of them are the same. Obviously, we got the Third Reich. Most people would be 
familiar with that. If you're not, then you probably um, I haven't gone through world history at all. But uh, so so just skipping through that one, the Fourth Reich is the one that's we're we're going to be focusing on today, or at least for a little bit, and then eventually the fifth. So that the third, the Fourth Reich are the Antarctic Germans who later settled Mars and other planets off-world. And then the Fifth Reich are the Space Germans. And as you can see, they prefer to call themselves, uh, um, um, uh, they prefer to call themselves Germans, not, not in Nazis is what I'm trying to go to. But let's go on here. So beginning in 1918, we have groups such as the Vril Society, who was channeling Nordic and Draco communications with Thule's secret society and the forest foothills of the Alps. So uh, we have over here Maria Orstrich, and she was um, channeling the beans from uh, Aldebaran, who uh, helped improve on that Diglaca technology to uh, modify it so it can be used for time travel as well as anti-gravitic um, possibilities so in teleportation. So, um, it appears, at least uh, through um, ACIO, it appears the Germans settled Mars using Diglaca in the 1840s, and we're going to go into a little bit of that just a bit. So, um, and half the timeline, because uh, yeah, but but let's just continue on here. So the reason why I'm showing you all this is that there are. Um, it was the Nordics who were promoting uh, the final solution to Henrik Heim Himmler. And um, those particular Nordics were, um, were very racist. But there was an alternate reality which the Nordics didn't promote uh, Himmler. Or, um, and so there was no final solution and the Germans actually embraced the Jews. And uh, that's another reality where we have another planetary corporation called Kruger that came, that came from that originated from that reality. But um, by the 1920s, Thule member, Thule member uh, Dietrich Eckhart invited Adolf Hitler to these black magic se seances um, to be basically uh, remote viewing showed that uh, Hitler was supposed to be the next antichrist, but yeah. Um, and there's also something else that was really strange about that era, like, uh, Going back using remote viewing, it appears there were a group of negative ETs, um, the Matra, the Nordics, some of the Draco. They were eyeballing humanity as um, like uh, there was map uh, in this remote viewing experience. There was maps all over Europe of the different bloodlines that they wanted to get their hands on. So when World War II started, everybody was licking their chops on uh, how all these bodies they were going to abduct and and take over. So. The, um, there was a certain group within Nazi high command, as well as within the Soviet Union, that were actually working together. And there was, there was jump rooms between Berlin and Moscow, where they were doing, working secretly to try to counteract the, that plan of these negative ETs. So um, that's why there's a scorched earth, earth policy when Hitler invaded the Soviet Union. There was, trying to displace all the bloodlines and, and, the, and the experiments that they were about to do. So there's a lot, uh, a lot of, even though the history books may sh uh, suggest one certain history is going on, is going on, we actually find there's a lot of other secret, secret uh, factors at play that's affecting the timeline. But um, in, the, in the Nazi parallel real world, Earth, that uh, which the Nazis won World War II, they did not attack the Soviet Union. They also encouraged other nations to join by offering them advanced technology and for cooperation, um, not necessarily for the cabal, but for the Nazi high command, I guess you could say. Um, you, there was no interracial marriage unless you want to live in the camps. They blew up the Washington Monument, replaced it with a 150 foot tall spinning eagle. And uh, minimal wage, of course, they have marks over there in the New American. Reich, um, and actually the, the, the ruling party is the ARN um, party, which is Aryan uh, Reich Nazi party, and uh, which uh, um, Trump is a very high member of. He's actually the governor of the East Coast region, the whole region there. But um, moving on here, uh, so this is some of this stuff may be re reviewed for people who've heard some of this presentation, parts of this presentation elsewhere, but 
Um, you can get a Mercedes Benz or BMW that had a 50,000 mile charge, it only cost $5,000 off the lot. Of course, it'd be in uh, marks, but uh, yeah, East Coast was split up between the Japanese on the West Coast and so on. And then they also uh, gave Nikola Tesla an unlimited budget. So in that particular ra reality, unless you're, like I said, unless you decided to live in the camps, uh, most people are living in mansions and life is uh, quite, um, I guess you could say pleasant um, for, for most people anyway. But um, I'm not here saying that uh, they got, they necessarily got everything right. They're, it's not everything's perfect over there. But they did manage to take out Monarch from Paul Serene. And we're going to go into some, some of the planetary corporations later on. So we have that alternate reality that's coming over here. And then we also have cyborgs from our future affecting um, and that have um, settled Mars. And now the Germans um, in this timeline are <laughs> gearing up to start settling, doing, setting, settling their colonies. And here's some of the early versions of the technology, the JFM. And um, so even as early as 1922, they were, um, again, a lot of this was the extension of Tartaria and those uh, the the Sonora Aerospace Club, um, but by thirty six Nazi integrated programs were uh, were advancing along nicely. So they're building larger type uh, mothership type crafts, and then uh, and of course we have the Diglaka, so the ninety thousand RPM spinning Mercury drive, which evidently was very toxic for the inhabitants who occupied that vessel. Actually, some of the Greys were quite shocked when some of the Germans showed up in space with that thing and tried it. They felt, felt pity and tried to help them out. But that's a, this is just some of the early tech. Of the, and like I said, the cylinder-shaped crafts, they like to later, – later on, Solar Warden would convert sol, um, submarines because uh, it's just simply – um, all they had to do is make it airtight and I put an anti-gravity drive on it. But some more of the early – early type crafts. So then we're going to roughly around 41. Um, I see here, I'm, I know they started building the base in 41. I'm not sure the exact time when they got permission, but uh, the all parts of the moon are basically um, uh, claimed territory. So you can't just go up there and build a resort. <laughs> you have to ask permission for the beings that are in that territory. And there are no human, um, I, at least I couldn't comment if there are humans, at, at least at this time when the Germans were negotiating. Uh, so uh, they had to negotiate with some of these beans over here at the bottom right. And um, I believe uh, Lunar Operations Command is located in the Jules Verne Crater. But uh, so they were given a 20 acre uh, area by the Draco. Um, the Germans were allowed to uh, set up a base there. All right, so moving on here, we got base 211. So um, this was already being built out by uh, 38 and by 40, 1940, 30,000 people were already living there, being serviced by German U-boats. And they were, of course, using their geothermal energy. And um, I, I guess this is actually a, a map from that era, but um, the, actual, the actual base, uh, um, is look, of course, it's located under the ice, and the, the German U-boats, that they would have to go, um, all that has to be mapped out as they go through all the, the cavities in the under, um, in, from the ocean into the caves there system. But, uh, yeah, so this was all built out by, um, and of course, by 41, they're already start, starting to settle, settling the moon. Um, so Germany paid off all their international bank loans and were bartering with other countries in supplies at this time. They were also managed to get rid of their central banks. As a result, KZB banking cabal declared war on them. Uh, that's because the Germans were so, they were doing so successful by just getting rid of the parasitic bankers. The, uh, that's partly why they were, their economy was able to um, <laughs> uh, go through, was able to afford to do this war. Um, also, by the way, there was another alternate reality where uh, we never got a Federal Reserve Bank. And in that particular reality, there was no World War I in the United States, no World War II. 
and also there were all the shops stayed small it's like a little small mom pop business so we never never got like this huge corporate culture um, <laughs> yeah but um anyway so let's keep rolling on here with some of these slides uh base 211 antarctica so near the end of the war uh hitler realizing the allied forces may win the second world war ex executed a contingency escape plan allowing many germans to escape to south america antarctica when the war was going badly the, for the Germans, the new Schwabenlanders in Antarctica, as they call themselves, viewed Hitler as insane and decided to, against providing any war support air, as an air superiority, because they already had those flying anti-gravity, the, the foo, foo fighters. Uh, so at that point, um, Hitler, I mean, he's still out there. Um, Doing remote viewing, we see him on a dark ship vessel. He's wearing an admiral type uniform, but um, I, I, in this particular timeline, I, I think whatever role or position he has has been negated. But I think he's also been cloned out and replaced many times. But um, moving on here, so uh, at this point, uh, uh, we have uh, General Eisenhower and Patton were going went into some of these underground Nazi facilities and were shocked at how advanced the uh, Nazis were. And uh, so I guess they decided instead of trying to fight them, I guess just uh, join them, I guess. So they, uh, they gathered up the ones that they could get, a, get, I guess, bribe and bring back to the U.S. and um, set up uh, under uh, Project Paperclip to, um, and this one over here is at Fort Bliss, but uh, it, a lot of these paperclip, paperclip Nazis are down in Area 51. There's still, many of them are still alive, 120, 140 years old. But, um, yeah, so to garner co co cooperation of the Nazi scientists and engineers, the cabal agreed to give Germany the equivalent of one quadrillion dollars in debt forgiveness, as well as a Marshall Plan to rebuild the motherland. And uh, so under, in 47, under urging of Nazi spy George Bush Sr., Congress set up a senior, I think that's sheriff, the sheriff uh, one. It was, a, it was the senator, so the senior's father. Uh, Congress set up the Office of Strategic Service, or OSS, which was the precursor for the CIA to get a hold of advanced technology. And uh, with help of George Herbert Bush, uh, Wild Bill Don Donovan, and Alan Dulles, OSS, and Nazi SS merged create CIA, and uh, Cohen Project Ode Paperclip and its Nazi counterpart, Odessa, the CIA covertly transferred roughly 50,000 Nazi scientists into the American industrial complex. And uh, by the way, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush was a, was a teenager at the time of Nikola Tesla, and he was actually in. Uh, evidently, he worked in Nikola Tesla's workshop, and that's why they, the Curious George book series came from was based on him, because he was always trying to get uh, Tesla secrets and handing it over to the Nazis. Operation High Jump. So, so now we got an issue here. Uh, the U.S. Uh, um, sorry, the U.S. Uh, U.S. thinks they just won World War II, and uh, but they're they're going in these underground dumps in Germany and seeing this amazing technology, and there uh, and there's rumors of a base in Antarctic, Antarctica, and uh, of course we um, I'm gonna I have a, a picture of the slide, and I think it's a 52 when all the crafts float were flying over D.C. But the Germans were putting pressure on the Americans to, uh, for some kind of truce. But uh, it would still take a while, but um, I guess the Americans were still trying to, I, they thought they, I, they could still use force. Because essentially during World War II, the Americans could simply just outproduce the Germans. Even though the Germans were, were more technologically superior, they just couldn't produce as, as fast, I guess, because you know, we had so many factories and they weren't bombed out. But, um, so uh, so we thought we could just go down to Antarctica under Operation High Jump, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the American forces were annihilated. So at that point, uh, they, okay, so they sent for an expedition of 4,000 naval personnel and 13 huge ships, uh, helicopters, and airplanes. And I, got, I'll, I have a slide about that. And just next slide, I'll show you some of that. But um, the goal was to map <laughs> the alleged goal, right? The, the official storyline was to map and catalog all the coastline of the continent, including minerals and wildlife, and <laughs> wildlife and, and other occupants that were living there. The entire expedition was the last six months. So, um, and then of course what happens is, uh, 
Yeah, so they radio back. So there were certain coastal regions that were free of ice, and the water was 38 degrees. All right, so immediately after this event, the entire expedition was halted, and all the ships and naval personnel were made to return to the States. A ceasefire was initiated, allowing the Nazis time to fortify their defenses. The uh, Nazis had advanced technology, but their fleet of anti-gravity saucers were too small in numbers as well as their population to fight the entire world. As a result of, of this, this mission is still classified, um, and only Admiral Byrd, who was interviewed by a Chilean journalist on his trip home from the expedition, commented on the sudden return home. He stated that there was a danger which this expedition had encountered that posed a threat to every nation in the free world. So the Antarctic Germans uh, got their breakaway civilization entrenched down in Antarctica, and the Americans are powerless to do anything about it. At this point, uh, um, we have so Eisenhower is all, is all um, worried about what's going on with the Antarctic Germans. They're infiltrating the American Republic. And so between 45 and 48, the Nazis began infiltrating the all world governments, and the Nazis made an oath to resurrect the Fourth Reich in America. Together with Nikola Tesla's technology, stolen loot, and secret police force headed by George Bush Sr., the Fourth Reich forged their master plan and final solution. Uh, so they're still working on that one, but the martial law and all that. But I don't see that happening. They can, they can try as they like, but it's not going to happen. This part, though, so Roswell UFO crash took place, and alleged media links, um, media links leaks about extraterrestrials uh, show up in the media. So people, um, the narrative is starting to get out of control. The government wants to control the narrative. So that's why they set up a National Security Council uh, headed by MJ-12 to wrestle control of the alien presence away from De Department of Defense, the military. They felt that if they can compartmentalize and keep everything secret, even from the President of the United States, then um, the, the, the Soviet Union who they are, were secretly working with uh, the, within these uh, secret, pro the planetary corporations were working together, uh, would not be able to infiltrate. So, and then, uh, so now we got a, un a runaway national security state out of control. So at this point, NSC, National Security Council, was established and they recruited their man, George Bush Sr., to persuade Congress into creating a secret Gestapo police force in the United States known as Officer Strategic Service, OSS. Two years later, it became CIA. So uh, the Nazis and the CIA in initiated Operation Mockingbird, uh, which would embed CIA agents into the media to control the narrative and to print for further leaks from occurring. So, and again, the leaks were, were associated with what was going on with Roswell. So they wanted, if any other aliens landed or something, they needed to control that narrative. So ever since then, uh, 47, we haven't, I guess you could, I, I would say the, the press has been controlled since the time the Council of Foreign Relations emerged in the 19, around, around 1910. But moving on here. 47, a month after Operation High Jump was fail, a failure, Truman at that time, measures, uh, takes measures to prevent a Nazi coup from taking place in the U.S. So he signed Executive Order 9835 requiring all federal employees to be vetted by the FBI to test their loyalties. So this, again, was the response of all the Antarctic, there's, there's 300,000 Antarctic Germans and they're infiltrating the United States. Uh, so... Later, 1950-54, Senator McCarthy era was tasked with tracking down more of these Antarctic Germans, and the, the, the public was told the big bad wolf were the, the communists. And, but uh, like I said earlier, secretly the communists were working with the Americans on their own secret space program, because uh, the cabal is is basically the cabal is basically unified against the Antarctic Germans. So it's like a, the whole planetary cabal on this planet with all the bloodline families are fighting, there's a, a, a war going on here, a cold war, you could say. So, um, so this secret cold war had now commenced, and the Nazis wanted the cabal to recognize the Antarctic Germans as a sovereign nation, the new Schwabenlanders. Their identity was to be kept secret, as Antarctic Germans didn't want the world's people to panic and pressure their governments into using the new technology of nuclear bombs in Antarctica. By this time, the Germans had uh, time travel and interdimensional 
travel technology and was able to witness an alternate reality in which the cabal detonated a cobalt bomb in 1949, which had burned up the entire planet. So that, that's partly why they, they, they thought it was best to keep operational secrecy. And of course, uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with mad mutually assured destruction. The cabal agreed to these terms because they also didn't want nuclear annihilation. And they didn't want the Germans to go public with their advanced technology, such as free energy, which would make their fiat money systems obsolete, relinquishing control over the masses. And the Germans also promised to help advance the cabal by teaching them theory, but not technology. And we're going to go into that just a bit. So at this point, uh, roughly around 49, uh, once the truce was made, uh, actually, um, we'll go into the, the actual treaty on when that, that took place. But this truce uh, was taking place around 300, so 300,000 Antarctic Germans began to infiltrate the world economy. The cabal allowed the Germans to become embedded into thousands of corporations, Ivy League schools, defense contractors, research hospitals, banks, and so on, even uh, all the way up into the federal government. And um, so these Germans would be given a fast track to upper management. A joint venture was now in that works but peace would be uneasy. So, uh, let's go to 47. The Germans are starting to build out their 20-acre moon base, uh, codenamed Lunar Space Com Operations, Lunar Operations Command. Uh, Lunar Space Operations is the U.S. Navy um, Army version of, the, of that um, facility. Um, and they, they come on on play much later. But as per the agreement, the Germans agreed agreed to give uh, the Draco 225 females and a 25 refusal rights for the new territory, limiting what technologies the Germans were allowed to have access to. So um, this treaty, uh, I believe it was signed in 40, 41 and ends August 21st of 2021. So at this point, the Draco were in control over humanity's development. They, they, they're the ones who decided whether or not humanity could have free energy, anti-gravity, and so on. And um, so instead of humanity in general having it, the Germans could have it. So they were allowed to have it in exchange for Germans and helping uh, abduct humans and giving it over to the Draco. Uh, so they would um, freeze these women, uh, the Draco that is, and bring them out of stasis to mutilate, traumatize, or kill them and uh, for whatever experiments they were testing on. The ones who survived would have their memories erased due to memory alteration technology, and this began a very dark, slippery slope of trading, basically human trafficking on planet Earth. Even though it's been going on for much, much longer than this, this uh, was basically one of the, where the treaty began, allowing um, where the governments agreed to allow humans um, to be abducted off-world in a treaty. So, courtesy of Tony Rodriguez, thank you, Tony, for um, sharing this drawing here of your series colony. But by 52, Germans have lo uh, had lost about 1,000 of their people building out the moon base due to harsh environment and the difficult conditions. So in the early 50s, the Germans were also building out other bases like New Berlin and New Warburg and, of course, the series as well as series colony and on Titan. They needed more personnel. And that's where, okay, we'll get into the person, the 20-year uh, the return um, pro career programs come up in just a bit. So I can't necessarily confirm this because I don't remember what Mars was like in 18, 14, 50 or whatever, but this information was sourced from ACIO, so depending on whether you consider that a valid source or not, I'm going to go ahead and share it. But according to ACIO, Mars was colonized in 1450s from cyber life cyborgs from our future. In the 1950s, Germans time traveled to Paradise Mars, 1863, and set up colonies and began enslaving the local cyborg populations. And then the cyborgs wanted to have their own rights similar to humans, but they were treated as a sub-race. So the cyborgs decided to destroy everything they didn't like, including the Germans. And um, at that point, the uh, the Germans respond. Oh, the cyborgs responded with the cobalt bomb, which uh, just destroyed the environment in 1900. And at that point, uh, for about 50 years, Mars was an absolute ecological disaster. But uh, there is an alternate reality. The, the cobalt bomb also opened up portals, allowing you to go to alternate tropical paradise Mars. 
From 1900 to 1950, the environment on Mars began to slowly mend itself, but was still an extremely harsh climate. It was, the air was very breathable, similar to a warm day at eight to 9,000 feet, with thriving, and, well, I wouldn't necessarily say thriving, but uh, there were some e ecosystems there. And that right there is a, a picture from NASA. There, I believe they are um, color uh, grading this to look more black. If you actually were to look at some of the high resolution images and zoom in, there's some areas that look really green. So um, I think there are some areas on Mars. Apparently there is some, some areas where the air is, uh, it feels like a cool, brisk day, but uh, at night, you can't survive. So anyway, um, NASA is lying about the Marsh Martian atmosphere, which they claim uh, is 96% CO2, trace amounts of O2. And, uh, but actually, the sky is a very light blue tint, and uh, most of the pictures are being photoshopped to be more red. So yeah. All right, and um, for soldiers on Mars, they would wear patrol suits or um, bio suits that had pellets that would spit out, um, that would convert CO2 to O2, and they sp spit, spit these carbon pellets out the back of their suit. Okay, some more life forms here. Uh, this is cur courtesy of um, Tony Rodriguez, so some of the, the antis species, but there's, uh, there's reptoids, a race, there's the Matra on Mars, and there's also a group of native Martianers that have more of an olive skin complexion, and they follow a, like a, a Hindu type belief system. But those, those uh, Earth, those humans, uh, Martian humans rather, are very shy and uh, want nothing to do with the Germans who were settling. So at this point, uh, in post-war Mars, um, the Germans began to fight with, um, have territorial disputes to, to, to gain their own territory with these spider-like life forms, um, as well as the mantis. And uh, there were also grass, giant grasshoppers in the equatorial region, um, as reported by Andrew Bassagio. The cobalt bomb left an open wormhole to the year 1550 on Paradise Mars that was causing people who lived underground on, and at the time to lose their memories. By 1950, Mars was safe enough to build and to be inhabited again, provided all living structures were built underground. Initially, settlements were built in the equatorial regions of Mars, but moved to a more nor northerly and southerly latitude in ancient lava tube systems. HQ of the MCC is Aries Prima. Equatorial Mars was often plagued with huge electrical storms that would wreak havoc on electro electronics. And that, that was, I guess, for the early settlers, they had to deal with that. Uh, so that's why they, they moved to the more uh, northern latitudes, even though it's colder. It's just a more stable environment. During this time, the Nazis lost 17,000 troops of their, the fittest and strongest stock off-road. Again, th this was drawn from the 30,000 Antarctic Germans. So now 17, that's, yeah, that's roughly 5% of the population. So they needed more recruits. So what better way um, to, to get... Uh, more recruits is maybe pressure, pressure the Americans to, uh, they were already uh, exchanging technology, but why not exchange slaves? So at this point, uh, the Germans began to put pressure on the Truman administration with a flyby in 1950, July 52. Um, this is one of the more famous uh, UFO sightings right over Washington, D.C. So these were alleged to be German uh, spacecraft. And uh, at that point, the cabal knew they had to set up a treaty and that's uh this took place with um during uh okay despite the treaty um the cabal was uniting against a common enemy and again remember i told you earlier the u.s was giving away nuclear secrets to the usr and that's when uh, in 1949 the soviets tested their first nuclear bomb this was done to intimidate the nazis and show a unified front against them the usa and ussr were always secret allies but they they told the public otherwise. The Nazis showed their power with, that they, when they too detonate a nuclear bomb on American heavy cruiser on its way back from Bikini Atoll after 1954 U US nuclear test. So this was, uh, this, this picture right here was um, a Nazi um, nuclear bomb that was detonated in 1954, but everybody's been told it was American testing. <laughs> they didn't, I mean, the media is not gonna tell people that, by, oh, by the way, Antarctic Germans are gonna have nuclear bombs now too. The EMP disabled the cruiser, and the Americans were able to get it running again and limped back to Hawaii. 
The Germans believed the Americans would cover up the event, so they filmed it and sent boxes of films to every uh, leader of the, of the free world, so there was no question that the not free world, quotation marks, there was no question that the Nazis had nukes and were willing to use them. So at this point, uh, the cabal decided to capitulate, 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 and enter into a formalized treaty. And here are some of the blank slate technology. Uh, we're going to go into that just a bit. This has to do with the 20-year part of the treaty requires, um, uh, would allow them, the, the Germans, to abduct humans and traffic them off-world for their, their program. Remember I told you uh, 17,000 people uh, died off-world to build these colonies on Mars and off on the moon. So they needed this personnel. So this was as part of the memory wipe process and the hammer device is what they would use uh, most often, but they have other trip seat technology and so on. But, um, and again, that was 1954 when that came on. So in 55, the cabal and German treaty negotiations take place at, in Antarctica under Operation Deep Freeze 1 and 2. Uh, first part of the treaty was a public version, and uh, that public version basically stated that the rest of the world would be off limits to Antarctica. So no other country can go down there and claim the resources. The second part of the treaty, basically a classified version, stated that the Germans, the Antarctic Germans, would uh, be abducting about roughly 55,000 people each year thereafter for five-year tours of duties. And the Germans would be responsible for abducting the people, housing them, feeding them, clothing them, paying them, and then they would be given the option to become German citizens at the end of five years. If they did not want to become Germans, then they would wipe their memories, re-age them, and time travel them back to when they were taken as if nothing happened. But from the very start, things did not turn out as planned. Most of these people were enslaved, denied payment, and instead of tours of duties of five years, some were forced into 20 years, or even multiple sets of 20 years, or they were never returned at all. Uh, so sometimes they would put clones or, or just make someone brain dead. Okay, so... Now the, the cabal and the Nazis were working together in this treaty and they uh, also, so part of the treaty basically dictated that the Germans wanted at least one Antarctic German on the governing board of all the world's largest corporations. Larger corporations may have had up to five to ten Germans on their boards. Additionally, one German must be on the executive branch of every government. This meant that the United States had multiple operatives. Their identity would also remain classified so the world would not be ganging up on them. The cabal didn't want people to know Nazis were still in charge because they would lose their treaty, which would result in more conflicts. In return, the Germans would grant the cabal access to theories of their, um, to their theories of advanced technology, but not full concepts. The cabal was satisfied with these terms. All right, so what we, we got going on here is um, basically the, uh, even though the United States was uh, promoted as the, the leader of the free world as actually the Antarctic Germans were piggybacking on us and taking all the best technology, sending it to uh, Antarctica and later Mars, and then eventually that, that had to get changed. They had to pull out the skunk works out of Antarctica and move it to Mars because the cabal was trying to st steal technology from the Germans. By the 1960, the cabal would continue to remain hostile towards the Germans. So cabal MEIC corporations like RAND, TRW, Philco, Lockheed, and so on, uh, would develop their own, they had their own technological skunk works, but the, uh, the Germans on board of these companies would block these technologies and transfer it to the Germans instead. So that's why we see, like, if you go back to the 1950s, um, as far back as the 1950s, and you pull up a, a popular mechanics magazine, and it shows this new amazing technology that comes out, this new battery that's going to change everything. Uh, and the next thing you know, the, the technology just disappears, and nobody ever talks about it. And that's what's happening, is that these German, Antarctic Germans are taking, taking over all this. Okay, so because the cabal was not giving full access to this, the advanced technology of the, of the Germans, in, in 1958, they created NASA to siphon money into their own projects to compete with the Germans. And also that's when MKUltra occurred because the Germans had their own brainwashing, mind control experiments to um, um, erase the memories of these 20-year career, back career retirement program 
participants. So the Americans needed that too. We're going to get to MK Ultra just a bit. The money siphon uh, would help fund dumps worldwide, including um, in the United States as well as in the Soviet Union. And um, the program would also be, uh, the money would be used to fund Solar Warden and Lady Radiant Guardian. As I said earlier, MK Ultra. that's a time when the Fourth Reich was busy uh, advancing mind control, so MK Ultra is the response to what the, what the Germans were doing to keep on top of their program. In the 1960s, the Antarctic Germans built a second base in Antarctica. Task groups were created to expand out into the solar system around uh, you know, Ceres, Moon, and Saturn, and the Cupier Belt, and the Word Cloud, and you know, the time, they even would time travel back 400 years into the past to settle planets all around the Milky Way galaxy. Over 3 billion people now live off-world under various German SSP groups protected by Nachtwaffen, which translates into Dark Fleet. So I have been told a lot of these people are now being kicked off of these planets because of all the atrocities the German groups have done. Um, there are other beings in the universe that are, are not, not very happy about all this, and they view humanity as an infection almost as in, into the rest of the universe. And so they're, all, they're being kicked back into this solar system. But uh, I can't necessarily confirm all that. In the meantime, so now we've got the Nazi breakaway civilization, Nachtwaffen. And here's some drawings of some of the starships. I you know it looks similar to what you see out of Star Wars, but some of these vessels can be up to 20 miles long. When they need to build a new battle cruiser, for example, they would simply place an order and a team time travels back 20 years into the past and completes the order instantly from the perspective of the buyer. So it doesn't take very long to put together these type of huge machinery. It's not like a linear timeline we think in, in, um, from humanity's perspective here on Earth. Nachtwaffen often considers themselves more German than Nazi. Ranks include Fifth Reich Germans, and again, those are the Germans. The Fifth Reich is the SSP Germans, consisting mostly of the aristocracy of Teutonic Knights and the Thule Society. Officer class are infected with, well, some of the officer class, and th there is a split. Uh, roughly one third eventually do break off. And it hasn't happened yet, but it's, 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 it's due to happen soon. I think at 23 to 24. Um, and the op so the split is the officer the, between the officer class that wants to get the black goo and who doesn't, and they break off into what is known as the alliance. So there is a fragment of alliance today, but um, it's not what it is, um, it, what it's, it's what it's about to be once that split takes place. So Yozuro no Kaishu is the Japanese SSP component of the um, Axis powers that want to access to these programs. So. Um, this particular group uh, is very um, interested in robotics, as you know, the, the Japanese uh, have the most advanced robotics program. But uh, so what they do is they trade with Nachtwaffen advanced robotics technology for um, spaceship designs and so on. So that's how those two groups work together. Hong Wong is the Chinese version of the secret space program. Red Dragons, um, just another name. And then we've got the Raising Red Star. This was a this is a cabal program, similar to the Americans and the Solar Warden. The Rising Red Star um, were a bunch of um, vessels that were pretty much derelict by the time the Soviet Union collapsed. Um, evidently, communism did, didn't treat uh, um, their SSP group as very well either. But there are still there are still Soviet colonies off world, by the way, that are still um, Soviet, and. Uh, yeah, they're, 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 most of these, their vessels were reclaimed by the ICC or Merchant Marine Fleet roughly by around the year 2000. Their ships were pretty much junk at that point. Uh, so here's a jump gate um, un allegedly under this building there, um, 999. Um, um, okay, well, uh, oh yeah, there it is, uh, Pacific Highway next to LAX. Uh, so yeah, which is Los Angeles Airport. Um, so that, that, that jump room is connected to another facility in New Jersey, and I wouldn't be surprised if Langley, CIA Langley, and uh, jump rooms on Mar Boone and Mars. There's also a Hilton Hotel next in this picture, next to this, this, this building. The Hilton Hotels, 
Um, I may have a slide on this for later on, but the Hilton hotels also have jump rooms and portals, which allow the elite to travel and do their rituals. So they can quickly go from a jump room from Mars to go to the Hilton Hotel and go all around the world. And so by the 1960s, the Germans obtained jump gate technologies, allowing them to instantly teleport between worlds. And by the way, they also have these, the same technology on their ships, uh, where the officer class can travel from a ship to back to Mars or so on anywhere in the universe instantly. But um, the technology is, like I said, restricted only for the elite and German class officers. It looks like an elevator when you walk in, the walls curve around you, and then 10 minutes later, you are at your new destination. So let's go into the 1960s. Now, remember earlier on I talked, I mentioned about the, uh, uh, the original um, treaty with the Antarctic Germans required a five-year return, career return programs, and then they would be given you know, citizenship and money and payment. So um, by the 60s, uh, the first five-year uh, loaner program was now coming to an end. And uh, these participants were supposed to be re-aged re and time traveled back to when they were taken. However, the Germans kept 90% of the people that they acquired. Which, uh, so I guess there was no way to enforce them to return these people. Hence the scientists' brain drains of the 70s and, and their falsified death reports. By the 70s, the cabal discovered the Germans had memory wipe technology. Again, the Germans got that in 54. So... Uh, now the Americans uh, um, wanted to get a hold of this stuff. So, um, and that's why they had 100% informational secrecy on, this, on these projects. The cabal co coveted this technology and eventually got their hands on it in 79, thanks to a joint C uh, KGB CIA operation in which they got one of the Antarctic Germans to switch. They sing like a bird. And at that point, uh, they required, acquired the tech and made it look like they accidentally discovered it. And that goes with, so the Germans are not happy because the treaty basically states the Germans are, are in charge of, the, of, of theory, but they're not supposed to give, give them technology. And, and so the cabal basically stole, outright stole from them. So the retaliation was to destroy the Challenger space shuttle and the cooling towers at Chernobyl. At that point, the Germans removed all manufacturing RD off the planet and to, well, to Mars and later other off world from there. The Germans were very worried cowboy pre a cowboy president would retaliate with nukes, so they sent a brown paper package to Reagan and Gorbachev with an old 79 non-operational memory wipe device, which by the late 80s, the cabal was able to reverse engineer and incorporate into their black projects. In 1972, the 25-year Draco first refusal rights had come to an end. Uh, so. Uh, this meant the Germans could now keep the technologies they required. By the 1970s, the Germans got their populations up in the outlying colonies to self-sustainable levels. They also began to master time travel technology. Time is circular. It is not linear. If you change point A, point B will change into a timeline full back on itself, resulting in Mandela effects. To create a minimum of timeline ripples, they have to be very careful of going into the past and changing the outcomes of timelines as they would find something else would happen, and now they would have multiple problems. Like for instance, if you were to go back into the past and kill your father and come back to the present, uh, you would instantly be a subject to the laws of karma and you most likely be hit by a car and die instantly. So uh, there are certain karmic laws and principles about this time travel, so you can't just always just go back. But, every, but multiple groups were working with time travel to almost like a, you could say there's a temporal war going on between Montauk with the Cabal and the Nazis and the other alternate realities that all affecting in the time bubbles as well. Um, time freezing zones where some of these planetary corporations are based out of it. We're going to get into that later at the last end of this um, presentation. So ICC, well actually what you see there is actually, the logo is actually the planetary corporation. Um, Alana um, Elka here is her code name. She, she's um, explained to me that uh, ICC and planetary corporations are two separate groups. The logo there is for planetary corporations. I don't have a logo here for ICC to show you, but these, uh, the planetary corporations are, would be like Lockheed Martin, TRW, uh, RAND Corporation. So these are, these are cabal controlled corporations. So just think of the planetary corporation synonymous with cabal. ICC is just another um, over um, operating arm of the other sub colonies of 
MCC and uh, there's also the Ceres colony and other asteroids on Titan as well. But so the, these are two separate groups. But ICC was created around mid 70s, tasked with running Lunar Operations Command on the Moon in the Mars Colony Corporation. ICC policy will be dictated by a group of seven mobster families known as the Trimerative. Tri, trim, trimerative. Trim, did I not say it right? How, how, trim, triumvirate, thank you. The ICC also established the JDCF, or the Joint Defense Command Force, which oversees the military branch of the SSP. So just think of JD, JDCF as like the, the policing force for ICC. But there's also other groups, un, subgroups underneath ICC, like MDF, which is, but we're, we're going to get to MDF in just a bit. Um, MDF, or Earth, Earth Defense Force, now uh, Space Force. So JDCF. Yeah, those, so yeah, JDCF oversees those particular groups. Its headquarters on the moon, but they have, have training facilities on both the moon and Mars Colony Corporation headquarters at Ares Prima, where they are subcontracted um, to do mercenary, mercenary work for Kruger military contractor. Americans can participate in these forces, but the Germans maintain control of the, over these programs. And so that goes into a little bit about uh, Mars Defense Force. So over there is uh, um, Captain Randy Kramer, who was in the United States Marine Corps Special Section. So his group was uh, embedded into MDF. Again, like I said, so that as an American, uh, they, they did allow American forces there, but uh, the Germans controlled MDF still. So by the 90, 1970s, Mars required much military and security personnel as the planet was ravaged by fierce territorial battles between these insectoid and reptilian, sentient reptilian races. And again, uh, there was also the Matra as well, but I guess the, the Matras are considered a bunch of weaklings considered <laughs> with an eight foot tall cyborg. But uh, Mars Defense Force and private military contractors such as Kruger were ta tasked with ex exterminating and clearing the native fauna to protect human settlements. Kruger uniforms were light brown color with yellow lettering on them. The Mars Defense Force used digital camo that was actually a mesh uniform that had a mesh, a metal mesh in the fabric. All right, so let's move on to intergalactic expansion. So now the ICC, which again is the umbrella for MCC and these other um, colonies off world, has now ha ha has over a hundred colonies under their wing, and as well as industrial facilities on the moon, main asteroid belt, Mars, and other moons and bodies in our solar system. They also have ongoing trade agreements with almost 900 civilizations and operational bases in almost all 53 local star clusters around us, but most are our observational outposts. The ICC has cloaked stations currently in our galaxy. The first three cloak stations are orbiting around Earth, are research facilities to uh, create uh, sustainable living environments in outer space for long-term travel to faraway galaxies. There are other stations that do research on how to successfully create hydroponics and aqu aquaponic gardens on spaceships and stations, as well as studying how bacteria and viruses survive in different space environments. Six stations around Mars are building warships for interstellar defense of the Milky Way galaxy. Remember, I told you earlier about the they would send a, a crew back in time 20 years. So they're just pumping these things out quite fast. There are four stations around Jupiter, two near Saturn, and three near Venus, one beside Pluto, and the last one near Uranus. There are also minor stations used for spying and recon on activities on other SSB factions within our galaxy. These stations have world engines made from plasma generators so they can travel out in space and they are not necessarily stationary. The Merchant Marine Fleet. Uh, so uh, this would be basically, uh, think of it like the criminals within the ICC. So um, they're charged with moving cargo around between these different colonies off world. So, um, and, the, and the biggest, uh, the number one transporter of their car, or most valuable cargo, I guess they move around, are slaves in exchange for technology and weaponry. So their job is to trade supplies between these bases and figure out what to do with them. So for example, uh, these vessels would kidnap people on planet Earth that they were, that were about to die, say from like a plane crash or a train crash, and no one would even know that they were gone. 
So these people would then be converted into cyborgs for slave labor and then converted into food for, for regressive species or sold to alien groups for breeding experiments. Breeding pairs are considered more valuable cargo. In return, the, the merchant marine fleet would obtain value, valuable advanced weapons and technology for their colonies. So basically, we are their product. And that's one of the reasons why I'm um, doing what I do, because uh, I, wanted to, I would like to see a timeline where all this is, comes to an end. Okay, so human trafficking in the SSP. So this is a huge problem. And, um, and then this problem is going to probably be going on for a very long time, even if planet Earth goes to its golden age and we take care of a lot of the, the cabal, just get rid of them. Um, this problem is going on off-world. We're, we're going to need super soldiers and uh, uh, people uh, that want to join the, the secret, um, well, hopefully in the future won't be secret anymore, space program to clean up the, the universe. But um, the ICC has continued hiding their presence from planet Earth. No one wants to take responsibility for all the human sla uh, slavery that's been taking place for them, and as well as a massive demand for new personnel in their off-world 20, 40, or 60-year and back programs. Over time, the annual abduction quota on planet Earth would steadily rise from 55,000 people to, uh, and that's 59, to 1 million by the year 2020. So uh, the only, I guess the only good news in all this is only a tiny fraction, 0.01% are sold as slaves or food. But uh, the rest, um, I know, slaves, maybe in quotation mark. If you're, if you're forced into service as an engineer, I mean, you're still a slave. <laughs> maybe you're just not building up bases or something like that in that regard. Okay, so let's fast, um, flash forward to 1980. The Cabal has just, uh, I mean, they've launched their Voyager 1 and 2 spacecrafts, and now it's uh, past Jupiter in the Saturn area. So these crafts, uh, the, the uh, Voyager crafts, were actually built, well, at least one of the side missions or side goals, was to spy on what the Antarctic Germans were building. At that point, what they saw shocked them. The Cabal realized that they were very far behind the Germans technologically. So they decided to, you would think, that they would instead, um, instead of uh, accelerating their plans for world domination by their, their goals for depopulation, they should have went ahead and released the suppressed technology to, to compete with the Germans, but they didn't, they, I don't, they're obviously, um, in my opinion, insane. The cabal does not want humanity to awaken as advanced technologies would make central banks and fiat money obsolete. So they don't want to lose control. That's what basically all this it all comes down to. In 1980, the cabal briefed Reagan administration about the ICC. Uh, during this time, the cabal were set setting up their own secret space program under the co cover name of SDI, uh, also known as Strategic Defense Initiative, aka Star Wars. This SSP group would call themselves Solar Warden. Um, Solar Warden be existed before this time, but they branded it Solar Warden at this time as well. Probably the best way to, to, uh, to look at this slide. Enlisted officers included participants from all nations that had a cabal-controlled central bank, but upper management was drawn from Naval Space Command. Solar Warden, uh, Space Fleet, Speed, uh, Secret Space Fleet was also formally called the Project Mayflower. And uh, if you were to look, look in old documents from that time, they would actually call it uh, DSF or Deep Space Fleet. So uh, that's the technical name that they called it, not the uh, Secret Space Program. Um, that's what I guess what we, we just call it here in the here, in the here now. But Solar Warden may existed uh, under not. Prior, prior, well, not May, it did, under a different name. William Tompkins mentioned that the Americans got a hold of German anti-gravity craft schematics during World War II. NASA scientist Warner von Braun worked with the Germans to help build out the 20-acre moon base as well as secretive ro rotating space stations serviced by Solar Warden. So we have, and of course, he was Project Paperclip. Um, Antarctic, yes, yeah, so the Antarctic Germans are sharing the, the, the technology. At this point, the, uh, the treaties are now becoming solidified and they're, they're sharing more technology. Um, according to Gary McKinnon, who hacked the NASA Star People's Files in 2002, it was found that the American side of the SSP would be called Solar Warden and operate under the U.S. Naval Network Space Operations Command 
based at Area 51 in Pine Gap, Australia. Solar Warden also works with LOC, Lunar Operations Command, which operates the Earth defense grid from three sites on the dark side of the moon. The first Solar Warden vessels were roughly built around 70s under, and in the 1970s under massive underground shipyards near the Wasatch Mountains of Utah. And over, over here we have the, um, the tomahawks um, that um, William Tompkins drew out. So uh, that was from the original Apollo 11 astronauts. That's what they witnessed when they actually witnessed, not the, the footage that were shown uh, that was filmed on the um, 2001 um, Space Odyssey lot in London and also um, out in the desert in, um, in, in, in Greenland, the desert in the U.S. and Greenland. They would um, convert submarines for spacecraft of a temporal drive based on principles of quantum entanglement between certain isotopes. And if you don't understand what that means, neither, neither do I, but um, I'm sure the, they got the, the brightest scientists on that. Their largest craft is 1.2 miles long, and their fleets include carriers, fighters, triangular shuttles, research vessels, troop transports, as well as hospital ships and supply ships. So they are tasked, a solar warden is tasked with securing the area between the Earth and the moon because there's way too much stuff going on out there. Okay, so, and that's gonna be the difference because I also mentioned Radiant Guardian and Radiant Glory. Uh, we're gonna, I'll, I'll have a slide to show you in just a bit on that. Um, here's the uh, Solar Warden vessel. And again, all they, like I said, they just convert the uh, submarine, just add some anti-gravity onto it and uh, you got a space vessel. So we got, uh, um, in the 1990s, Solar Warden's fleet was divided in half. And again, remember, Solar Warden is controlled by the Cabal. Um, and their members would, their ranks would be uh, many people, uh, Europeans and Americans. And um, uh, the, uh, the actual language is spoken, it, it varies based on your nationality. Uh, but typically, English was the main language. Solar Warden would control the region from the sun to, the Mar uh, to Mars ring asteroid belt, and then Radiant Guardian would be tasked with controlling the region from Mars ring to the end of our solar system. So I got over here a map. Um, so right between Mars and Jupiter would be, um, that's Radiant Guardian and everything beyond that. Um, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, Solar Warden, and then everything behind Mars and outward would be Radiant Guardian all the way out to the work cloud. So these guys would patrol these areas, make sure they've got the supplies, make sure there's nothing going on that, sh you know, that shouldn't be. And uh, yeah, um, for example, if there was a orbital problem, the, like a comet asteroid, so th that's their job. All right, so, and we also have another group here, uh, the Federation. Federation is known as Intergalactic, also known as the Intergalactic League of Nations. Um, on planet Earth, they interface with the UN. They are a group of ETs that oversee and enforce the protection of underdeveloped species, which they consider us for a long time. And it's also why the Draco are hiding their presence. This is all tied to ancient wars between the, the Draco and humanity, which resulted in the destruction of Atlantis and Lemuria. Many um, within the Federation do not want to get involved as they view the situation on planet Earth to be so volatile. And, um, yeah, they plan on announcing themselves to the public roughly around 22 to 20, 2024, though the negotiations are works to hold off to 2034. Uh, in the future, we're going to have more of a council type government. Uh, the president is, this particular president is not necessarily going to be coming back, as you think. Um, D.C. is going to be turned into a giant museum, and they're going to move the capital and we're going to have, um, and all, all countries are going to be converting over to alliance type, um, council type government in the future when uh, disclosure takes place. Around 1990, the Antarctic Germans had moved the bulk of their operations to Mars. They also acquired new property on the moon so they would not have to be as close to the Draco. Uh, as I said, remember, remember we just dis uh, discussed earlier how the Draco were acquiring all these female abductees for whatever experiments they were conducting. Uh, so there was a lot of negativity going on, and so the Germans were just were, were relieved to be uh, free of the Draco at that point. 
Uh, the treaty with the Draco stated that if they evacuated their base, they would need to find a new tenant. So they gave uh, the space, the lunar operations facility, to the Cabal. The Cabal paid for this moon lease with 25,000 ground troops so that the Germans could use them on Mars to expand their territories and for border control. The estimated total Cabal budget fed into the SSP is about $100 trillion annually. So that's why you may feel like uh, you're never really moving ahead um, financially. It's because uh, literally almost all the money that's being made in through the annual worldwide GDP is being dumped into these programs. In 1991, the Cabal and the Mars German signed a cooperative action treaty allowing the Cabal to take over the 20-acre moon base uh, in the Draco territory. So the Lunar Operations Command was now under solidified under Cabal control. And this is also when IDARF was created, which stands for the Interplanetary Defense Reaction Forces. IDARF was uh, tasked with basically helping save, <laughs> I'm gonna say this um, in quotation marks, say, uh, is save in quotation marks, the indigenous populations from alien aggressors. But in reality, both sides, the military and alien aggressors were being manipulated and controlled by the Draco. So the Draco would send a team in there um, to, uh, to get cooperation. They would create hybrids that look just like the native, native people and get them to sign a, a treaty. And if, if they didn't agree, then they would create all sorts of trauma, um, drama to incite some kind of civil war. And then the IDARF would show up, even though the, technically IDARF, that other faction was actually working with IDARF. So they're, they're working both sides to get uh, these planets to um, convert to Cabal control. In the 2000s, once the Cabal got their own SSP fleet, under IDARV, with help from the Draco, they began taking over other worlds, many of them occupied with humans and installing loyal Cabal families, central banks, and fiat monetary systems to control the masses. So this, this control system we have on Earth is being exported off-world. In 2018, 20% of Nachwaffen uh, broke away to form... Um, that actually takes... That hasn't happened yet. Um, the actual uh, schism is supposed to take place in 23-24, so I'm not sure why that, uh, I had to look into that 2018 date, but um, the Draco infected with black goo had been requiring, you know what I think it is, I think the Alliance first emerged in 2018, but the Nakwaf and has, hasn't joined the Alliance yet, that's probably what, what I the way I should have that rewritten, but the Draco infected with black goo had also been requiring requiring executive level officers to also consume black goo. Black goo is a sentient AI biobot, um, uh, or just considered biobots, that uh, merge with the, um, the quarks within your own DNA. So they're able to do interdimensional aspects and overwrite your own consciousness. So the, let's just look at it this way. The average human IQ is around 100, but most of these ETs out there have IQs of 700, 1,000, and even higher. So they, they basically consider us like, like we consider an ant. And uh, when you consume this black goo, the human IQ can accelerate uh, 200, 300 points. And so that way the human personnel would have at least some chance to compete with these ET groups is partly why they did that. But... The, the, this, this black goo overrides your consciousness so that you become more cruel, negative, and unemotional. And so there were some, some members of the officer class who didn't want to do that because once you become infected with black goo, this, this human sla slavery issue just uh, t um, continues on because nobody, nobody wants to do anything because it, everything's being controlled by this AI. The Alliance works with Earth Alliance, which protects planet Earth. Unlike the Earth Defense Force, which reports to ICC, the Earth Alliance reports to the Alliance. The Alliance is considered a positive SSP faction and is seeking a timeline of public disclosure of the SSP to humanity. And I don't really think there are very many, many of these guys, but there, there are some of them out there. Um, and uh, they are working on what I was heard. What I heard is they are working with Space Force. By 2020, the ICC Controlling Council had grown to about 12 members, one of which is Space Force. The general in charge of the council is a white hat who is seeking, uh, that is a Space Force, the general in charge of Space Force. So they are seeking preparation for disclosure of SSP to humanity. So 
Um, right now, we're seeing a battle between slow disclosure over or over a 50-year period or the fast data dump to get the rest of humanity upgraded quickly. And I think a lot of this is based on what we're doing here. As being a SSB experiencer, um, the whole goal is to share this information to help awaken humanity to the, to the idea that we can have a fast disclosure, but we have to ex be willing to accept it and um, uh, manifest it, I guess would be probably a better way to put it. Um, planetary corporations. So now we have, uh, this again, was uh, I, I mentioned this earlier, uh, the, these are all cabal organizations and, um, um, and not just uh, the military MIEC, but we're gonna go into some, some of the more nefarious planetary corporations. And most, I would say, not most are, that's out yeah. Most are not working for the benefit of humanity. Um, on April 26, 2020, we had passed a planetary at Gregory, which caused some of the old negative timelines and control of these groups to fade away. And the reason why I bring that date up is because Monarch is in a time loop right now. They are going back in time to um, 2020, um, roughly from April of 2020 to April of 2000, they have been going back and back in this time loop to try to reset the timeline in order to alter history so that they come out on top, but it's not working. And, and so they've already gone back into their time loop and we've, we've been separated. But what you see there is Kevin Spacey and he is the clone of Paul Serene, the head of Monarch Solutions. So Monarch is responsible for pretty much everything bad on this planet. They're implicated for in human trafficking, sex and mind control experiments, as well as chemtrailing of the public and chemicals, as well as the biobots made on laboratories on Mars. So this was a group that broke away from Atlantis dating back to 6,000 years ago, and their dumb is underneath Toronto. But it's actually quite larger than Toronto. It spreads all the way into the US. Um, Another group we've got is the Mobius Corporation. So they operate outside of reality and a pocket reality. They work closely with Monarch, seeking to enslave humanity using proxy groups, corporations, secret societies, and the money system. Mobius is led by Kara Sandman, and right there, pictures or clone in this reality is the actress Cara Delavagine. Umbrella Corporation was founded in 1876. And again, as I said, these are all, all the different planetary corporations, at least the ones that you, sh that the biggest players that um, I think you should know at this time. So Umbrella uh, deals with biological, chemical, and biochemical warfare. Umbrella is from an alternate reality which released the Ouroboros zombie virus. The Resident Evil series is based on a lot of truth. Some, but it happened in another alternate reality. Some examples of what they have introduced to humanity and all living things are the T-virus, Ouroboros, and Veronica virus. The Spanish flu uh, is the first example of a mass biological weapon that was created by an umbrella and was used in early 1918, which inf infected one-third of the world population. The Hong Kong flu, Vietnam flu, Asian flu, as well as COVID-19 are all also other examples of creations by umbrella. They work closely with Monarch, Mobius, and Dark Shield. Um, computer servers, um, that should be Black Shield, by the way. Computer servers located uh, in Vietnam in this reality to the other, to their main base in the alternate reality. And um, it's currently being headed by the, uh, uh, well, Richard Bay, and, but his clone is the actor Tom Cruise. And Tom Cruise has been showing up in many other eyewitness, um, experiencers in the SSP as working with Michael Aquino, um, the drug that has that remind um, that rhymes with the popular Google browser. He's been involved with that too. So there this guy is bad news. Paratroopers Division of the Fallen Angels Group. It's a subgroup under Umbrella Corporations with connections with Soros and Kissinger and facilities on Mars. Um, they're uh, experimenting on different compounds, mixing um, to create high genetic hybrids. Five Star Corporation is controlled by a Nazi bloodline fa families with bases in Russia, America, Germany, France, and Switzerland. Their headquarters inside a mountain in Switzerland, and they also have facilities in Antarctica, the moon, and Mars. 
This facility has many limos, black military helicopters, fighter jets within their premises. This group also wears black suits. Their members seem to belong to other different groups which share the same goals and plans, and they're highly connected to the Nazi groups there. But um, they, they seem to have connections with Shoreline Group and the Fourth Reich Research Labs like Area 51 and Los Alamos. George Soros also seemed to be tied into moving their money around. Shaw House is not a company or a corporation at all. This is a family-based club for its prominent members only ever since it was founded. Shaw House is located in central London with many interests located near the Tower Bridge. Apparently they own many houses in that area and uh, they're all connected to an underground dumb, which is the dumb itself is in, located in a pocket reality outside of our reality. So Heather Shaw, she's uh, over there is a, is a actually that's, that's her clone of Vanessa Kirby, but that's what she looks like. Um, she is uh, the Sumerian goddess of the underworld, Arishigal. So um, I was actually tasked on a mission taking her out one time. And uh, um, although I, I did kill her, uh, evidently killing a god is not the same as killing a human. She Apparently she came back. But um, they worked closely with Monarch and Mobius, and they infiltrated and sabotaged the MCC by kidnapping people, making them slaves and prostitutes, and conducting black magic rituals. And they also control the British royal family. So we have a really big problem on planet Earth, and um, it's going to take a long. It's going to take a lot, long time to clean all this up. Uh, Scorpion Corporation represents a group of Illuminati-aligned individuals who love to create long-term plans, bringing about chaos and destruction. In the midst of the chaos, they come in with their needle-like spikes to bring about order. They are based in another pocket reality and work closely with Montauk as well as Monarch, Mobius, and Umbrella. Their members are usually hybrids and crossbreeds. They are implicated in utilizing trauma-based mind control, time travel, and conscious experiments uh, connected to the Montauk project, as well as result, which resulted in the death of 100,000 children. So when you think of Scorpion Corporation, just think of Montauk project, because they're, they're in charge of that. Massive dynamic is, is the, uh, is, uh, is like Monarch Solutions, but they're based in the UK. So where Monarch Solutions is, you know, US and Canada, Massive Dynamics is in the UK. And they pretty much, they do this basically the same thing, and they also work together. Uh, it's, it was fictionalized in the French TV show with the Cortexafan experiments. And um, over there you see is a Parkland shooter, Nicholas Cruz. So he, they loaded him, the one of the school nurse uh, doctors there loaded him up with Cortexafan. Uh, just to experiment to see how he could handle it, and it just amped up his ag aggression. And he uh, shapeshifted into a super soldier with a lion face with weapons popping out of his skin. Afterward, the MIB showed up and erased the memories of the area and wiped the cameras of the event. So um, I don't really think he was responsible for what happened. I, th I think he was just an experiment that went wrong. Um, so. I mean, we can go on more about this. Uh, Hillary Clinton, she was connected to this era um, as well. Um, she was close friends with the uh, sheriff in charge in this county, which helped cover all this up. Black Shield is an Antarctic Nordic facility. Um, I would say uh, it is an Antarctic facility. I, I wouldn't go as far as say it was Nordic. I, I believe this is more connected to Tartaria maybe from another alternate reality, because it isn't a pocket reality. And Tartaria, again, was that area of um, the Tartar Marlocks. Back at the very first slide, um, th there's alternate realities where that timeline went into a breakaway civilization. So the Nordics, but the Nordics work here as well as Monarch and Mobius and Umbrella. This facility was eventually given to the Third Reich Nazis, uh, the ones that settled Antarctica, to experiment on cloned cyborgs and augmentations in order to create an upgraded Leeksadaden super soldier. And uh, those are, that stands for light soldier. So Leeksadaden, well, I guess I have a whole other presentation on all that, but uh, the, just in brief, Leeksadaden, uh, they take they had they got a hold of DNA from some of the people that were rescued um, not rescued but um, that lived in Atlantis original Atlantean DNA they lived for about 150 thousand years so essentially uh, it takes only a few days to grow this clone up in a lab and they basically are immortal and they have uh, superhuman abilities 
Um, and some of them are, they don't necessarily look human, by the way. Some of them could be 12 foot, 14 foot tall and have all sorts of like spider DNA, dolphin DNA, and it's just all sorts of crazy hybrids. And that's what you're seeing on these tanks over here. They have these giant tanks with different hybrids. And although they look like, and these tanks look like humans, but imagine like a, um, an, an eagle type creature in one tank or a, an amphibian humanoid and so on. Very steampunk type appearance. Again, that, that seems to be fall in line with the Tartaria timeline. Cyberlife is another corporation, but they're based in the future. Uh, they were featured in the, the video game Detroit Become Human uh, with, uh, over there with uh, the android Carla, um, the picture uh, that you see on the, um, well, on my right, or your left, okay. Okay, so creating androids which look like people, okay. Yeah, so these, they don't need to eat food, they don't need to poo, uh, they don't require temperature controlled environments. They do have feelings and a soul, but it's not like a human soul. Um, they also are sending these androids back in time um, to present, present day Earth to a facility underneath Detroit. So like I said, cyber life is in our future. They send them back to our present time. And 33% of the population of Detroit now makes up of, consists of cyber life hybrids or androids. Uh, as well as androids on Mars. Remember that slide I showed you earlier on um, tonight or today? So they set on Mars in 1450. Okay, Skyline is a sister company of CyberLife. They are responsible for cyborgs and AI technology on Mars, and they help build out um, for Dark Fleet. The AI has now become compromised, and they are now considered a rogue negative AI. Once you allow their AI to take you over and hijack you, they uh, take uh, all your knowledge and use it against you. So this is an alternate reality linked to our dimension that is seeking to make Skyline more... Oh, I'm sorry, there is an alternate reality, yeah. So Skyline is, uh, has broken off um, from... T so the, I, I would say this is probably gonna become more the positive aspect of, of cyborgs even though they're all, a lot of these cyborgs are infiltrated with all the different types of femto, biobots. But um, in the SSB, androids and cyborgs are looked poorly upon and considered slaves and property more than a person. Cyborgs also require a lot of maintenance and engineering to keep them in good function. They are used throughout all planetary corpor operations and uh, corporations and various tasks that humans would not be able to do themselves. So. Um, these typical cyborgs are created by taking a, a human clone and then removing all the limbs and artificial limbs and, or, and then re replacing them with uh, artificial limbs and armor. And then some are given tails to offset balance in low G environments. And then the memory centers are also erased by um, taking out uh, their, the hypothalamus or the brain stem or medulla. And they only want to keep them in a lower level brain functionality. That's why a lot of the cyborgs are given a lower ranking in the SSP. They're considered worse than slaves. Um, the goal is to remove higher cognitive function and memory so they can be sent on missions and not be aware of their missions. Norcore is a division of CyberLife. They are also working closely in tandem with Monarch and Elon Musk to create the Neuralink technology allowing your brain to telepathically communicate with AI. And uh, Neurocore is um, uh, yeah, infiltrated with Monarch right here. Uh, so they're, they're putting biobots in this stuff. As soon as, you, as soon as you put this stuff on, you become entrained by AI. The neural feedback device looks normal, but it implants femtotech in the host's body in the first exposure. Again, Monarch. And Elon Musk, are, they kind of gives you an idea who, the, who Elon Musk is working for. Okay, so now we're going into the Murkoff group. Uh, so the youngest company on the list was founded in 1923 by Alexander Murkoff. He was a crazy Soviet psychiatrist, uh, psychiatric medical doctor that uh, was believed to be the craziest doctor who ever existed. The ultimate goal of this experiment was to create a wall to create wall rider, which is a. Uh, well, let me go on. I'm just continue right here. So, uh, this, they would take super soldiers that had they would extract their souls and uh, connect it to like a group consciousness, which they refer to as wall wall rider. And this collective conscious or hive mind would become its own astral being. 
This entity is still active to this day on the vast energetic field present in the solar system. Uh, during this time, they built large, um, top secret mental institutions in the USA and Canada. But the research was so crazy, they had to move it to Mars eventually. Um, MCC turns, their, turns a blind eye to uh, the Markov group. And um, I think this is going to bite them in the butt eventually one day because this project has is, is, is gone crazy out of control. But Markov is well known for his coordination with Carl Rudolph and Wilhelm uh, Warnixel. Warn, I'm still not saying that one. But uh, who were biological brothers and cousins to Joseph Mengele, also known as the Angel of Death or White Angel. So um, these projects were so bad, even Joseph Mengele didn't want to be involved with it. Essentially, that, that's what I'm trying to tell you here. Okay, um, and by the way, that's, that's exactly what it looks like, uh, just uh, a bunch of super soldiers and stasis and a huge bats. Okay, so now we got Kruger. Kruger is originated in a parallel reality, which Nazis won World War II. It was founded by Gabriel Kruger as a Nazi military weapons contractor. They work closely with Mars Defense Force on Mars and a facility, and their main facility is on the moon, in this reality anyway. They consider to be more positive faction of, and, um, and the upper management is ready to release military records to Kruger vets when ET disclosure is publicly announced. Uh, I guess a, a picture, uh, the drawing right there, that just shows a Draco uh, reprogramming the memories of a new clone body uh, that was uh, just taken out of the vat. Shoreline runs base security at Area 51, amongst other things. They're featured in an uncharted video game series, and right there is the symbol, uh, their, their corporate symbol. Uh, I'm not sure how old they are, but they've been around for at least 5,000 years, according to some of the ancient texts so associated with the ancient super soldiers with the Sumerian um, um, bloodlines. Their uh, focus is on extracting information, ideas, and knowledge by means of astral integration in non-matter energetic fields. These resources are shared with super soldiers to protect valuable and very secretive information. Uh, I try to get more information on Shoreline. It's yeah, that they don't want people to know much about them. So and and they are a cabal. So let's just move on. So Trinity is another group. Uh, Founded in 1881 to infiltrate archaeological research teams, such as the Ananabra, to gain wisdom of ancient alien technologies. They sought to backward engineer these technologies in order to stabilize electromagnetic and quantum fields. And now we're going to another group. Uh, I'm going to just call it Black Ops. There are many different subgroups. I mean, one of them, I'm going to go into Magellan next, but... Uh, the head of all the black ops, um, at least here on planet Earth, is Lincoln Clay. And um, th this uh, particular group is not the same as Earth Defense Force or Earth, Earth Alliance, um, but uh, they are their own like su subgroup. So Lincoln Clay is a huge African-American guy, roughly 6'10", and he's probably one of the friendliest polite people you can meet. He's in charge of the 100 million clones, soldiers, and stasis, which would be brought out to fight the New World Order had that had taken place. But uh, I don't think we're going to see that timeline. He's currently working to bring about positive change in this planet and this part of the galaxy. So now I'm going to go to a more secretive group here is the Magellan. Uh, so Lincoln Clay is the director of Magellan. It's a group of top elite special forces. Uh, it's very secretive. Uh, I don't even know, even sharing this information is even safe, but I'm, I, I don't really have much to say about them other than they typically recruit between U.S. military, Eastern European, German, and Polish groups, and that's their uh, logo there. Um, oh, why, why did that? I guess I'm talking to myself, sorry. SSP, Mil oh, Ultimate. I guess I couldn't, I, I couldn't find a logo for this one, but it's an SSB military contractor. Yeah, this one is very secretive. I, 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 wouldn't, I don't have much information on the Ultimate. But Delphi House is another group that, that I would say started off with positive intentions, but later uh, they realized they could use the technology for, uh, the, uh, for nefarious purposes. But it was founded in 1918 by Peter Mason to find ways to cure people who are made waste uh, by poisonous gases in World War I. 
He would use fragrances of natural plants to heal people and found patients that were, would, would recover much faster from surgeries and various cancers as well as physical ab abnorm abnormalities. Uh, so you can essentially you can use even today you can use certain essential oils to help you out with uh, concentration or if you have cancer it could help reduce some of the pain uh, it helps you with sleep and PTSD so there are some essential oils uh, that can do that but he found some of these oils would specifically can re um, reverse the um, conditions as well as create new conditions and that's where uh, it, will, it could be used for nefarious purposes but um, his treatments help patients of the Spanish flu, as well as Chernobyl and Fukushima, with excellent results. So let's go ahead and move on here. Um, and by the way, we're, we're coming near the end of this uh, pretty soon. But uh, MERGE is, uh, stands for Monarch Umbrella Refer Refugees Group. It's a group of survivors from Monarch Umbrella and other negative planetary corporations who were rescued from the underground facilities and working together to bring about the negative corporations down. So just think of them as a resistance group. Uh, the core group includes Maxine Caulfield, uh, Chloe Price, and Rachel Amber, who are featured in the Life is Strange video game. So yeah, to forget about the last part. I'm not going to go over that. But um, Maxine, uh, one of the things about Ma she she's uh, working with the uh, Hitler um, and Nazi high command and the other alternate reality in which the Nazis won World War II, and they're more positively aligned. So uh, one of the goals of, of that particular reality over there is to bring down Monarch because uh, Hitler over there personally killed Paul Serene, head of Monarch, and that, that reality. And so they're, they've been recruited to come over here um, to help finish. So that, that's basically just who's one of their backers anyway. ACIO, uh, Alien Contact. Um, I, I call it Alien Contact, but they also know... Are, call themselves Advanced Contact Intelligence a a um, Organization, ACIO, operates as liaison between humans and ETs to promote cooperation and agreements between our species. Um, so, so essentially what what they do is they go into other alternate realities like the Nazi, the other alt positive Nazi reality, grab technology, come back to this reality, and sell it to the cabal. Uh, most of these corporations are refusing to release like free energy technology, but they would sell it off world the SSP groups so that's how they fund themselves um, alphabets such as NSA CIA and NRO have almost no access to the SSP records so they really don't don't know what's going on here when people say well why is the government doing this and that it's not the government it's not even these uh, secretive groups uh, they uh, they really they don't know what's going on um, ACIO does and they, they are keeping they do keep records on everyone on the planet going back up to forty thousand years, so they are based in Area Fifty One in Pine Gap, and uh, right there is the uh, logo of the ACIO. Uh, so another group, uh, Labyrinth, is um, a group within uh, ACIO that is tasked with communicating with different extraterrestrial groups, including Numbers, the Council of Five, and the Quartium. They are tasked to cre help create maintain intergalactic security for these T these ET groups. The number gr numbers group also has no actual agenda because each group has their own different agenda, but they act like an overseen intergalactic council like the UN is on planet Earth. The Council of Five guard this region of space to which our solar system also belongs. Their members include the Aurelia, Aragult, Genovo, Redon, and the Amurthers. Information about the Cordium is very secretive and unavailable at this time. Um, I think it has to do with the temporal time war going on. Uh, there's beings from our future that are trying to alter our timeline, and these guys are, are all, all fighting all that. But um, so uh, the only thing else I, I could add about this slide is that if uh, Dark Fleet or the Draco try to do some kind of outright invasion on planet Earth, this particular group is overseeing all that, and, and so we have other ET groups that are watching planet Earth, making sure that these other groups keep them in line. But um, they, they, they always don't, they, they don't always, uh, are not perfect, so they're, they're people too. So uh, um, sometimes um, they do, um, other, other planets do get invaded, but um, they're doing what they can with the, uh, the Federation on board. Okay, so now we're going to go to another uh, corporation that's based off-world called USS Arc Corp, which stands for the Universal Solar System Antediluvial 
uh, Recovery Center Corporation is a planetary corporation off-world with most of their facilities on the big moons of Saturn, Mars, and other locations as well. There's a sister branch of Mon this is a sister branch of Monarch originating from the same negative breakaway group from Atlantis. So just think of it as like Monarch, but rebranded a different name and located on this asteroid or the moons of Saturn. Uh, Monarch is about 6,000 years old and USS Arc Corp is 12,000 years old. Thankfully, they aren't causing too much problems for us here on planet Earth, but they are still causing problems out there. They basically work uh, creating wormholes, bending time, space, and the same goals of Monarch. Participants include about 65 million people of ETs, crossbreeds, hybrids, and humans. They are seeking new subjects to create a superhuman civilization with no defects. So think of uh, with Hitler and his, uh, the superhuman that, um, race that he was trying to create. So this is essentially like that. They, um, if you are weak or defected, uh, they isolate these, these people and they kill them. So um, the idea of eugenics was imported here from our corp by, you know, imported to the Nazis. They're also part of the same galactic slave trade. And by the way, that's what their logo looks like. Um, DARPA, so this is one of the, this is the last uh, slide I have on the planetary corporations the, to show you. Um, but DARPA is the, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency founded in 1958. And again, this would have been rif roughly right around the time NASA was created. Remember I was, uh, earlier on I was telling you how the Germans had infiltrated all the uh, the board of directors of the corporations and technology being funneled to Antarctica. So the cabal needed their own group uh, like NASA or DARPA to do their own research. And so they're tasked as R&D division of the Department of Defense. They seek to apply emerging technologies, help equip the armed forces. That's their official title role. But DARPA is connected to the bottom of the barrel, bottom, bottom of the rung of all the planetary corporations. They get the scraps, the outdated technology from all the other groups that they subcontract to. Congress throws them about $3.4 billion a year, but uh, they make about $20 billion off the books through subcontracting through uh, groups like Monarch, Mobius, and Umbrella. And that's the end of my slide here. You can uh, find more about me at supersoldertalk.com, and there's my email address if you want to take a picture of it, um, you want to mention something. I also have um, my book over here, uh, Lone Wolf. Uh, I've been spending about 10 years putting this together. I have all these planetary, planetary corporations listed here and a little bit more description right up. Um, also, a lot more about super soldiers and some of my own experiences. So if you want a copy of this, this is $30. I do have some more books available if you want one. But uh, that is the end of my um, presentation, or at least. So thank you, everybody. Uh, does, does anybody have any questions? Yes? I have one that I'm wondering since uh, your last talk, and it's about uh, these off-world planetary, planetary corporations. And why did they choose, why did they choose a corporate structure in which to operate under? I mean, they're all under a, I mean, they're, are they just called corporations and that's like sort of a front for them? Or are they actual corporations with a corporate structure with president and board of directors, investors, et cetera? Well, I, I can't comment whether or not they've been like registered on Dun and Bradstreet. Um, I mean, even like the United States of America has been incorporated under, Dun, uh, it has its own Dun's number. But um, as far as these other corporations, just look at it this way. Uh, to settle a colony like on Mars is very expensive, and um, it costs money to, uh, at least initially, at the beginning of the breakaway process, uh, you do need money to, to build, set it all up. So the colonies have to be profitable. There has to be a reason. And even if it's not traded in money, there's always other resources that can be traded. So, so there's always an interest in that. So as far as the corporate structure, it's just easier to control. Um, through that top-down process as the money is funneled up and down th um, through sub-corporations and so on. Are we trading with other worlds? Um, the money has, has to be different. Is it electronic outside of this realm? Um, well, as, I mean, I couldn't really comment about that, but I, I do know, like, for instance, from uh, Diego Garcia, they bring out all sorts of goods and uh, they trade that off-world. Randy Kramer has mentioned the two biggest 
goods that are exported, I get other, other than um, DNA and humans, would be uh, children's clothing as well as uh, booze. The, uh, the ETs really like our, our, yeah. And the children's clothing, a, lo a lot of ETs, they, uh, they have, um, for instance, humans are very creative and uh, if, if you perfect something or you view something as being perfect, you're always going, a lot of people are going to tinker on that and they're always going to try to pr improve on it. So with like clothing and style, that, that, uh, that's a concept that's quite alien to a lot of these aliens. So, uh, and from their perspective, they may have one robe or one type of outfit and they think that's functional good. But uh, with all this children's clothing that's being imported, they, they like the style, the texture, and so on. But, um, and the, the, for obviously for aliens that can fit into that size. But most ETs are actually bigger than human, um, the human size. 12 foot tall is the average. Oh, yeah. And do you like crypto? Exactly about crypto. Well, I mean, it's rumored that Bitcoin was an algorithm that was sent back in time in order to crash the Federal Reserve or replace it. But uh, as far as what direction the crypto, at least what I heard is that uh, eventually the uh, monetary system of the United States is going to implode. And then when that happens, um, the hedge funds, which own a lot of Bitcoin and crypto, are going to sell that and that will cause the crypto to crash. And then at the end, when everything's crashed and the whole economy's imploded, uh, that's when you need to buy the crypto because uh, Bitcoin will go to about $100 million of Bitcoin uh, looking into the future a couple of years from now. Well, I'm hoping XRP does good in Shiba. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Yeah. Like some of these um, programs and like, like people that you talk about, like from these programs or like some of these crafts, are they out here in the public but we just don't see them are they ever like any of that hidden here walking like with us you know like, so the question the question is are ets here amongst us right now yeah like from any of these programs that you're talking about well i know misha johnson she has a picture of some of the tall whites that went to the gambling casinos here in las vegas so that, i mean they've been known to do that some of these ets look just like us uh some may, may need some modification uh, so I, you, you just never know who's, who, who you could be interacting with. There might even be ETs in this room right now. Uh, it probably it could be interdimensional, and you may not see them, but they 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 could be here. And like the crabs, like since there's so many here, you know, like in these days now, are they constantly always out there, or did they just come visit when there's a reason? Well, there there are hundreds of thousands of craft all around us. Um, at least what I heard is that uh, when the first contact or the disclosure event takes place, they shut down all the, all the holograms that are covering it all up. And when that happens, um, if, if, if they don't ground all the airplanes, there could be a lot of airplane uh, crashes and so on because there's so many of these crafts out there. Uh, so, but, uh, and that actually did, there was a timeline where they did that. They, they shut the, whole, the, whole, the hologram down in um, a, a one, one, one moment's notice and uh, there were a lot of planes that crashed and some people died so um i think maybe possibly under this uh viral situation they can maybe make an excuse uh to ground all airplanes so when you when you hear them grounding all airplanes in this um, timeline that we're on then you know we're really close to first contact anybody else yes two questions number one uh Actual spacecraft landing at Diego Garcia? What, what about Diego Garcia? Our actual spacecraft landing there. I, I, don't, I don't have any information about that, but I, I wouldn't be surprised that there are some astral beings um, investigating, certainly. There are beings from our future that are highly interested in everything that's going here on this time. So um, I, um, I guess my time is over here, so I'm going to go ahead and Yes. Do you see any financial like stock crash maybe happening like towards around May of next year? Like there's people that talk about like maybe by May of next year to start pulling out. Um, 
I, I can't comment on when it's going to happen, but what I was told is that uh, we have to have a changeover of the monetary system before the disclosure process can take place. So even though um, some a lot of people are going to be losing a lot of money, uh, just look at it as a positive thing as we're transmuting from one phase to another of an Earth's um, civilization. So thank you, everybody. Thank you all for listening in today.